Hello everyone, in this video tutorial, we will create a chat bot to chat with our CSV files using Llama 2 and LangChain. So here is the complete architecture. So let's first look at the architecture and then we will move towards the code part. So in the first step number one, so if you just, uh, if I just zoom over in over here. So in the step number one, the user will upload a CSV file. The user can upload multiple CSV files or a single CSV file. So in the first step, the user uploads a CSV file. Then in the step number two, we will extract the data or content from the CSV file. So after the user uploads a CSV file in the step number two, we will extract all the data in that CSV file. So now we have extracted all the data from that CSV file. Now we cannot pass that data directly to the Llama 2 model because the Llama 2 model has an input token limit. The input token limit of Llama 2 model is 4096 token and one token is equal to four English characters. So it is about, it is approximately 16,000 English characters. So we cannot pass more than 16,000 English characters at the input of Llama 2 model. But we can say that if we have very huge CSV file, a very, very huge CSV file, that CSV file can have more than 16,000 English characters. So we cannot pass that uh, all the data directly into the Llama 2 model. So what we do is basically we split our data into small number of chunks. Okay, so here after extracting all the data, we split the data into multiple small chunks like 10, 20 and we define that in each chunk we will have 500 characters or 1000 characters. So we will just set the chunk limit as 500 English characters to be maximum. Then after splitting our data into multiple chunks, we create embeddings for each of the text chunks. So embeddings are back, uh, basically vectors uh, that uh, are used to compress the size of text chunks. So to reduce the size of the text chunks, we create convert each of the text chunk into embeddings. Embeddings are basically vectors like this 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So embeddings are basically vectors that are used to reduce the size of the text chunks. So we will create embeddings for each of the text chunks. So if we have 20 text chunks, we will create embeddings for each of the text chunk. Then we will build a, a semantic index and using semantic index, we will store our embeddings into a knowledge base. So uh, you can say that, that we will store our embeddings into a database or vector storage. So we will create a vector database where we will store our all of our embeddings. So there are many vector database available like Pinebone, Chroma, Files. Files stand for Facebook AI Similarity Search. So in this project, we will be using Files as our vector store. So Files store the embeddings locally while Pinecone uh, stores the embeddings on the cloud. Each of the vector store has its own advantages or disadvantages or some limitations. So in this tutorial, we will be looking how we can save more embeddings in vector uh, Files vector database. So now you can say that in our uh, knowledge base or vector database, our embeddings will be saved in this format. Okay. So now what we can do after we have saved embeddings, when the users ask a question, for example, I am a user, I am just asking a question. When the user asks a question, we convert the question into embeddings. Then we do a semantic search. Like, uh, for example, this is the embeddings for our question. Then we do a semantic search. We try to find all the relevant answers for the question that the user has asked. Then we try to rank these results. For example, I want to rank top three results or top five results. So after we rank, the, uh, usually we rank top three results of the question that we have found in our vector database. So after ranking all the results, we send the uh, results to the Llama 2 model. And we send the question direct, the user question to the Llama 2 model directly as well. And then the Llama 2 model generates a natural response. So this is how the architecture looks like. So let's move towards the code part. So here you can see that over here I have created a new project, a uh, new project over here in my PyCharm community edition. So I will just go to file uh, or no, I will just go to over here and create a new requirements.txt file. Okay. In the requirements.txt file, I will list all the packages that are required for this project. So we require a rank chain. Create transformers, sentence transformers. Uh, basically, we will be implementing the Llama 2 model in GGML format. 
So C transformers provide bindings for the models that are implemented in the GGML format. Then we are basically using hugging phase embeddings, or we, you can say that we are using sentence transformers, uh, sentence transformers embedding to require the sentence transformers package as well. Along with this, uh, we require five CPU as we are using it as our vector database. So let's install all these packages. So you can just run Guru Terminal and you can just try it. If install minus r requirements dot txt. So this is one way in which you can install the packages. Other ways you can just go over here, go to settings, then you can just go to project and then you can just click on Python interpreter and then you can just click over here and just write files CPU. And in this way, you can install each of the package one by one. Like you can see that in Skype, just click on install package. So the package installation has started now. Along with this, I can also write length chain. So you can see that uh, files package installed successfully. Now you can see the message. I can also write length chain over here. Okay, so you can just click on install package from here. Along with this, you can just write C transformers. You can also install this package as well. Okay, and you can also install the sentence transformers package. Yeah, yeah, this is a so in this way you can install all the packages. I have shown you both the approaches in which you can install these packages. Okay, so you can just click over here and close this up from here. So now that you can see the packages are getting installed. So now we can just go over here and create a script.py file over here. Okay, so we are good to go. So now, first of all, I just need to create a directory by the name models in which I will place my Lama2 model. So I will just go over here and write models. I'm just running at all, uh, the script on my local CPU, which has 8 GPU of RAM and it is not a very good CPU, but it will work fine. So now in this model directory, I will place the Lama2 model. So to download the Lama2 model, you can just go to Hugging Face and the blue Lama2 7 billion parameters and GGML format. So here we are using Lama2 model, which is uh, contains 7 billion parameters and it is in the GGML format. So basically to run the Lama2 model in CPU, we require an optimized Lama2 model and GGML uh, models are basically optimized so that they can run easily on the CPU. Okay, usually Lama2 model require a huge amount of memory as well as uh, it it is basically, uh, it requires a huge amount of memory plus it requires a very fast system as well. So if you don't have any uh, fast GPU or if you want to, uh, it to run on your local CPU, then you can use the Lama2 model optimized with GGML format. And then you can just go below from here. So now you can see that we have uh, different models. If you just click on, file and versions from here. So you can see over here, uh, we have different models available over here. So in this tutorial, I will be using this model, Lama2 uh, model with seven million parameters and this in this bin format over here. Okay, so uh, as I have UGP of RAM in my system available, I will be using this model because it consumes maximum 6.29 GP RAM. But if you have a 16 GP RAM in your system, then you can use this model uh, a bit 8 bit quantization, like you can see over here, previous was 4 bit quantization. So, this is an 8 bit quantization model and it consumes maximum RAM of 9.66 GP. So, this is an 8 bit quantized model, and in this tutorial, I will be using this 4 bit quantized model because it consumes 6.29 GP maximum RAM. And if you want to download this model locally, you can just go to files and versions from here. Okay, and here you can just search for the model. So you can uh, download this model if you have an 8 GP RAM in your system by clicking on download. And if you have a 16 GP RAM on your system, you can just download this in model over here by just clicking over here. Okay, plus uh, the CSV data in which, uh, which I will be using in this tutorial will be this data from Kaggle. So this is the World Happiness Report data. And I will be using this 2019.csv data, which is available on Kaggle. So I will just show you some uh, data details uh, 
as I go towards the implementation. But this is the data which I will be showing you. So this is the one happiness report data available on Kaggle. You can just create your account on Kaggle and easily download this data from here, from the Kaggle.com. So this is all. So it's quite simple. You can just click on download from here and you will be able to download that data set. So let's move towards the implementation part. So if you just see over here, uh, I have already placed this Llama 2 uh, quantized DGML model with 4-bit quantization dot bin file into my models folder. Okay, so that's so good. Uh, one thing, other thing I can do is I can just create a new directory over here by the name data. In the data directory, I will paste my uh, model over here or, or my data set over here. So I will just create a new directory by the name data. So let me just add data set over here and let me show you the data as well. is the data which I have downloaded from Kaggle. So you can see that we have the country names or regions name from here. We have around 154 country names which you can see over here or sorry 156 we have. Plus we have the GDP uh, with GDP, GDP per capita of each country, social support, happy life expectancy, value, freedom uh, to make life choices, generosity, perception of corruption values, over here, like you can see this uh, values over here, like for all this 156 countries. So we will be using this uh, data and we will be uh, doing the chat with our meta, a model, Llama 2 model, considering this data as well. So let's move towards the code part and let's start writing the code. Okay. So first of all, I will just import all the required libraries. So instead of uh, importing all the required libraries, let me import all of them and try explain you uh, the complete code. So instead of I just write the complete code over here, let me import all these required libraries. So first of all, uh, you can see over here. So now you can see over here, I have imported all the required libraries. So the first library is CSV loader. So we require this library so that we can load our CSV file. Then we have recursive character text reader library. So we use this library to split our text into chunks. As I told you in the start that we need to split our text into small chunks. So as I told you at the start. So we will use CSP loader library to load the CSP file. Then we have, uh, and then we after extracting the data from that CSP file, then we split our text into chunks. The data we have in the CSV file will be split into text chunks. So to split the data into small number of text chunks, we require recursive character text splitter. Then we will download hugging phase embedding so that we will create embeddings for each of the text chunks. So you can remove this file, pinecone. We are not using pinecone as our vector database. So here we are using files as our vector database where we will store all our embeddings. And as we have the Lama 2 model in GGM format, so uh, to use the model uh, in GGM format, we require C transformers library. C transformer library provide Python warnings for the models that are implemented in the GGML format. Then uh, we will be using conversation retrieval chains. So conversation retrieval chains put, uh, comes with a memory component so that uh, to add memory in our to our, with our in our chat board, we require conversation buffer memory. So what is the advantage of adding memory? So for example, if I ask my chat board a question. Who won the 1983 World Cup? So I just clearly mentioned who won the 1983 World Cup. So 1983 World Cup was won by West Indies. So if I ask the second question, who was the captain of that team? So I don't mention in the second question that who was the captain of the West Indies team that won the 1983 World Cup. But my chatbot will still answer that Clive Lord was the captain of the West Indies team that won the 1983 World Cup. So if we had... Uh, the memory component to in our chatbot, our chatbot keep tracks the previous conversation with history. Then uh, you can just remove this and we have import OS. Uh, we don't require this as well and we will use this library if we want to exit from our chatbot. So this is all the, all the, all uh, all the required libraries that are required in this tutorial. So now I will just uh, uh, load the, uh, call the CSV loader so that we can load the CSV file. Okay. So now here you can see that I'm just calling the CSV loader over here and inside my data folder I have this 2019.csv file and here I've just defined the importings and CSV arguments. You can skip this as well. 
So now we have uh, passed our CSV file path. So now we want to extract the data from that CSV file. So we can simply write over here, data is equal to loader.load. .load. So if we just write over here, this over here, we will be able to extract the data from our CSV file. So let's run this and let me show you how you can extract the data from your CSV file. So if I just write Python skip dot file, and let's see if we are able to extract the data from that CSV file or not. So now that's the word. So now you can see over here, we have been able to extract all the data from our CSV file. So if we just start over here, I have just run this script over here. So country of region was the first column. Then we have Finland score GDP per capita. So we have extracted all the data from that CSV file. So that's look amazing. So after we extract the data from that CSV file, so if I just go back to the architecture, so after extracting all the data from that CSV file, we will split the data into text chunks, then we will create embeddings, and then we will uh, store the embeddings into our knowledge base. So let's implement these steps. So now if I just go below down, so now after extracting all the data from that CSV file, which you can see over here, we will split our text into text chunks. So we are using recursive text splitter to split our text into small number of chunks. And each chunk will contain maximum 500 English characters and there will be a chunk overlap of 20 characters. So let's split our data into text chunks. So we will see how many text chunks we get with 500 English characters as maximum. So now you can see that we have 156 text chunks. So after splitting the complete data into small text chunks, we contain maximum 500 English characters. Each text chunk, we have total number of 156 text chunks. So after we split the data into smaller text chunks, which contain maximum 500 English characters, we have a total of 156 text chunks, which we get. So now I will just download the hugging face embeddings. And then we will convert our uh, text chunks into embeddings, and then uh, uh, we will store those embeddings into a uh, knowledge base, a uh, files vector database. Okay, so let me just download the embeddings from Hugging Face. When I here, just write download sentence transformers embedding from Hugging. Um, Okay, so now here you can see that we are just downloading sentence transformers embeddings from Hugging Face. So now I will just store those. Uh, I will just convert the text chunks into embeddings, and then we will store those embeddings into Pi's knowledge database. Okay, so okay, so I will just go below down. So now uh, basically we are converting the text chunks. into embeddings so now we are just converting the text chunks into embeddings over here and we are just saving the embedding into files vector database and let me just create a vector, uh, vector database path over here so I will just go over here and create a new vectors uh, folder over here. Okay, and over here. Okay, so this is our uh, path where we just save our embeddings. So I will just write over here. Vector store db dash files over here. Okay, so over here and now I will just write over here. Okay, so our I have already added this name over here. So our embeddings will be saved into this folder over here. Okay, so let's run this and see if our embeddings are saved into this folder or not. So let me just check.
So this might take few seconds before we get the answer. So our embeddings will be saved into this folder if it runs successfully. Okay. So in the meanwhile it runs, let's move towards the next part as well. So now uh, if, uh, we will stay, so store our embeddings into files, no, uh, not vector database and we will create this vector database locally. Uh, in the next step the user asks a question and then we do a semantic search and we, then we rank the top three answers. Okay. So let's look at this step as well. Okay. So now it's done. So now you can see that our uh, we have converted our text chunks into embeddings. And we have saved embeddings using files vector database. And here you can see the .pkl and .files file of our embeddings as well. So that's look good. So now let's, uh, if the user asks a question over here. What is the value of GDP per capita of Finland provided in the data. Okay, so if the user asks a question, what is the GBD, what is the value of GDP per capita of Finland provided in the data? So next what I will do is I will write docs is equal to doc search dot similarity dash search and here I will just pass the query and we will rank the top three results. And here I will just print the answer or the top three results we get. So I will just write print to the docs. So let's run this. So what we are doing over here is when the user asks a question, then we will create embeddings for that question. And then we are doing semantic search and then we will rank top three answers over here. Okay. So this is what we are doing over here. We are just ranking top three answers. You can rank top five answers as well. And you can see that it's uh, progressing currently. So meanwhile it uh, uh, runs, let us define our Llama 2 model over here. And as we have the model in GGML format, so we will be using uh, C transformer li uh, library, C transformers library that provide bindings for the models that are implemented in the GGML format. So here you can see that we, this is the rank number one. So this is the answer which we get. And so you can see over here. So in this way, we have ranked our answers over here. So we are just getting top three answers over here. So let's call the Lama2 model over here. Okay. So we have set the temperature value zero to, uh, temperature value 0 0.1. The temperature value varies from zero to one. So if you just want your model to be very creative, you can set that temperature value high. But if you want the model to be deterministic and just focus on the data to generate the response, then you can set the temperature value zero. So in case of uh, generating some code, we just write temperature value high. But if you are doing some log or article generation, then we just set a temperature value low. Okay. So next, what we will do is we have defined our Lama2 model over here, which is inside this folder, models folder, and we have set the maximum number of tokens, like maximum uh, English characters, which we get in the output uh, is around 2000 English characters because one token is equal to four English characters. So let's have a chat with our chat board. So I will just uh, go over here and uh, add this. So now here you can see that we are just adding chat, chat history component. Over here, uh, I have just missed one thing over here. So let me just add this. So here we are just using conversational retrieval chain over here. Okay, so you can just find this out here as well. So conversation retrieval chain is built on retrieval chain. Okay, so we have already have retrieval chain in, uh, uh, we have uh, worked on the retrieval chain in our previous projects as well. So the conversation retrieval chain is built on retrieval chain which provides a memory component as well. So if you just want to learn about more about conversation retrieval chain, you can just go over here and just write conversation retrieval chain over here. Then just click on the first link which you get. Okay. So now you can see that the conversation retrieval QA chain is based on retrieval QA chain to provide a chat history component. So it can keep track of the previous chat history and all these details you can just review over here. And we will go into more details as we come in the in our upcoming projects as well. 
okay and here we i'm just passing my lama 2 model which is over here and here i'm just passing my embeddings over here okay so we have just converted our text chunks into embeddings so here i'm just passing the embeddings over here and let's have a uh, chat so as we are using conversation retrieval chain conversation retrieval chain is built on retrieval qa chain which provide a chat history component so here we have added chat history over here and you can see over here and here the user asks a question if the user writes exist the it will the system will exist or if the user if, uh, whenever the user asks a in question it will generate a response so let's run this script now You can just go to the terminal over here. And you can have, let's have a chat with our chat board, which we have built on this CSV data. So this might take a few seconds before it starts and then have a chat with our chat board, which we have built on our CSV data. So this might take a few more seconds before we have the answer. But let me ask a first question over here. Like you can see we have the input prompt. What is the GDP per capita of Finland provided? That? What is the value of GDP per capita of Finland? Provided in the so this is the first question which I have asked. So it might take one minute to generate the response and let's see what response do we get. Here you can see that we get the response. The value of GDP per capita of Finland provided in the data is 1.340. Let us see if this is correct. So if I just open the Excel file over here. So now you can see over here in Finland the GDP per capita is 1.340. So next let's ask another question. What is the happy life expectancy value in Afghanistan from the data provided? Okay. So let's ask this question. What is the value of happy life expectancy? in Afghanistan provided in the data. So this is the second question which I have asked. What is the value of happy life expectancy in Afghanistan provided in the data? Let's see what response do we get. So here we get the response according to the given data. The happy life expectancy in Afghanistan is 0.361. So if we just compare with our Excel file, so we can see over here, it's 0 0.361. So we have got the correct answer. So in this way, you can continue the further chat. And that's all from this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye.